July and 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Uh, this morning's Mass is offered for the parishioners of OLA. Uh, our celebrant is uh, Father John, and he'll be assisted by Deacon Antonius. Uh, you can find this morning's readings in your Blue Gathered Hymnal on page 1132. That's 1132. You'll find our gathering hymn on page 663, Lord of All Hopefulness. And I'd like to invite you all to please stand up and greet your neighbors. Now let's all sing together, Lord of all hopefulness. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. And Thank you and good morning. Coming together as God's family, with confidence let us ask the Father's forgiveness, for our God is full of gentleness and compassion. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life.
God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy for those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. As the Lord spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard the one who was speaking to me say, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have revolted against me to this very day, heart of faith, and obstinate of heart are they to whom I send you. But you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, and whether they heed or resist, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that a prophet has come among them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, that I, Paul, may not become too elated because of the abundance of my revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan, to beat me, to keep me from becoming too elated. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might leave me, but the Lord said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. I would rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses in order that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, with insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Tony 
is, may the Lord be in your heart and on your lips, you might worthily and fittingly proclaim this holy gospel. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to him, to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place, and among his own kin, and his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deeds there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. I think we have all heard the phrase, the home court advantage. It means that the home team has an advantage over the visiting team precisely because the home team is playing at home. Now they've done some studies about this with regard to football and basketball and baseball. I'm not sure if they've done studies for other sports, but they certainly have done it for those three. Nor am I sure if they've studied exactly how much of an advantage the home court, the home team gets. Nonetheless, there is a home court advantage and it makes perfect sense when you really think about it. Players know their home court or their home field very well because they practice on it and they play on it frequently. We all tend to be more comfortable at home and that's true for athletes as well. And then adding to this kind of home court advantage is the fact that most of us sleep better at home. I know I do. I would assume the same is true for most players as well. The best place to get good rest is at home. Good rest, good sleep, that's all part of the home court advantage as well. And then finally, the home court advantage is really augmented by your fans. I mean, your fans, they cheer for you, they shout, they clap, they push the players, really to give a bit more of themselves on the court or in the field, all of that adds up to the home court advantage. Now I have to think that when Jesus went back to Nazareth for a visit, he was expecting the home court advantage. These were his people. He grew up with them. He knew them and they knew him well. He worked with them. He actually worked for them as a carpenter, and he prayed with them in the synagogue. He fully expected to be comfortable when he visited Nazareth because Nazareth was home. More than likely, he kind of anticipated that his message might hit a home run, so to speak. But clearly, that did not happen. St. Mark tells us that when Jesus began to teach in the synagogue, as was customary, 
things didn't go well. Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given to him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? In other words, who does he think he is? And they took offense at him. That home court advantage disappeared very quickly and Jesus was amazed at their lack of faith. Now, you know, Mark doesn't tell us exactly what Jesus preached in the synagogue that day. We only have the reaction to what he taught. But it isn't hard to have a sense of what he would have shared with his own community. No doubt he told them about God's great love for them and how the Father had this deep desire that they be with him in the kingdom for all eternity. I mean, Jesus had preached this everywhere he had already been, so he obviously shared this the people in Nazareth as well. And you know, this part of Jesus' message uh, in some ways would have been very easy to hear. And maybe that's why for just a moment or two things felt positive. But there's also no doubt that Jesus would have strongly challenged his kinfolk about the need to reach out to sinners and tax collectors. He would have said that the way to God is by loving your enemy and turning the other cheek. He would have said that holding grudges and shunning the sick and mistreating those who are different or are foreigners was not acceptable behavior for God's people because God himself forgives and has compassion on those who are excluded. It's not at all hard to imagine that Jesus would have said these things to his fellow Nazareans because this was his message from day one of his public ministry. But like so many other prophets, before him, Jesus was soundly rejected and they took offense at him. In Luke's version of this particular event in Jesus's life, they wanted to throw him down a cliff headlong. Today's short, relatively short gospel, I think asks us, you and me, if we take seriously the prophetic and the challenging words that come from the mouth of Jesus. Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, we hear Jesus' message to love, to forgive, to be inclusive, to reach out to the poor and those society looks down upon. Do we take offense at this message? Do we ignore this message? Or do we find ways to live this gospel message in our daily lives? If we do live this message, then we can be assured that like Jesus, we will experience forms of rejection. Jesus' message, I think, as we all know, has really far-reaching implications. His message says something about how we ought to spend our money, what we ought to think about migrants and refugees, how we need to treat people who are different from us, where our focus of attention ought to be every day, how we need to respond to the most vulnerable among us, and how we should give God top priority in our lives every single day. May his message sink more deeply into our hearts and be lived out fully by each of us so that we may experience all that Jesus has in store for those who walk the path of the kingdom. For the kingdom is truly where our home court advantage can be found. Please stand and let us pray together the Apostles' Creed. It can be found in number 176 
in the hymnal. And together we pray, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We know that God can do what we cannot. Therefore, we offer our petitions for our sisters and for our brothers. That the prophetic voice of the church never cease to proclaim the saving power of the cross, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of the United States, that we may be united in building a society in which all can have the opportunity to live with dignity and hope, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Catholics throughout our nation, that the values of our faith may guide us to be active participants in civic life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country, celebrating Independence Day, that its citizens always remember our dependence on God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those throughout the world suffering from COVID and those that care for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the cause of the canonization of Father Jean Claude Collin, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing for all who experience the shadows of sickness and pain, especially for Christy Chuck McGraw, for Dia Kavanaugh, and for those in our prayer list and on our book of intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our community who have died, especially for Bill Kirk, Michael Gravella, Patrick Dobson, and for those inert in our columbarium, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And in the silence of our hearts, we offer our own personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. We invite the intercession of our Heavenly Mother and the patroness of our parish as together we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. As we prepare our gifts, please join in singing Open My Eyes, found on page 651. That's 651.
Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of all my sins. Thank you. My sisters and brothers, pray that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our, contact, our conduct closer to the life of heaven, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he has given us eternal life. And so with all the angels and archangels, with all the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his name. And when, as once for his disciples and so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this 
in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through the passion and death of the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, our Bishop, with all the bishops, the clergy, the religious, and all women and men who minister in your name. That in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our sisters and our brothers who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. They are in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with our Marist saints, Marceline Champagnat, Peter Chanel, the beatified Marist martyrs, and all the saints. We shall praise you and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. For us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Christ's peace be with you always. And now let us offer one another the peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life.
Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Individuals and families are invited to take the Elijah Cup home uh, for two weeks for, uh, to pray for vocations. When signing up, you select the date and mass when you would like to receive the chalice. The Paris Life Group is in need of a leader or leaders for the upcoming school year. If no one steps up, we will, uh, we will be unable to host a number of events, including Trunk or Treat, St. Patrick's Day, uh, St. Patrick's Day Bingo, and Easter Egg Hunt. So please see the bulletin for more information on each of these announcements. Also, uh, the St. Vincent de Paul Society would like to thank all who so generously donated to the recent food drive. Your generosity makes the food pantry possible and is a positive impact on the life of those served. As we commemorate the anniversary of our Declaration of Independence, we offer the following prayer for our country. Father of all nations and all ages, we recall the day when our country claimed its place among the family of nations. We give you thanks for what has been achieved. We ask your help for the work that still remains. As you have called us from many peoples to be one nation, grant that under your providence, our country may share your blessings with all the peoples of the earth. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace of Christ and glorify him by your life. And as we go forth, let us sing together hymn number 984, America the Beautiful, number 984.